After completing several model builds of various scales and grades, I wanted to share what I have learned through my many missteps and successes. This video, a part of my model build tutorial series, will be about applying water slide decals. I find water slide decals are easier to work with than the stickers that come with the kits and look better. Although I'm working with a Gunplug kit, the contents of this video can be applied to any model that has water slide decals. Okay, let me first go over the tools that I use for water slide application. I've tried many different ones, and these are the ones that I've settled on that help me the best and work the best with what I'm trying to do. So first, most important, and yes, I'm going to consider this a tool, warm water. Warm water is incredibly important because you need warm water to activate the uh, glue that the water slide uh, decal has on it, which keeps it attached. One keeps it attached to the backing and then acts as the glue eventually that holds it down. Now we, I will be using setter and I'll describe that a little bit later. Now, in order, down below, uh, in the techniques, I will explain how I prepare my water, but it's incredibly important to have it warm all the time. Another tool to use is decal setter. This is a fluid that has an adhesive in it. Now what I use is I use the Mr. Hobby's Mr. Mark setter. The Mr. Mark series is, are the fluids that I use. And with Mr. Mark, the setter has a slightly cloudy color as you can see. It doesn't dry cloudy unless you put a whole bunch on. So you use it limitedly and you sop up the uh, excess, but that's nice because you can distinguish the two and they both work very different. So this is what you would apply to where you want to put the water slide decal before you put the decal on and it, and it you, acts as an additional adhesive and then also helps it to move around on the model to place it properly. Once the decal is in place, then you use the decal softener once again, this is Mr. Hobby's Mr. Mark line, and th these work great. I've, I've had these for a long time. I've done 19 models, and it almost looks full, so you use very little of this. It, it isn't the cheapest in the world, but it works really, really well. But since you use so little of it, it's going to last you forever, pretty much. Um, and what this essentially does is once the decal is in place, you put this on it, and it actually melts the plastic of the decal and infuses it into the piece so it looks very, very flush. Uh, another thing that I've used, and I've used other types of tweezers, but I found that these reverse tweezers are great because once I put the decal in there, I don't have to hold on to it any, I don't have to squeeze or anything like that. It's in place. And what I do is I make sure that I have one that comes to a fairly nice point. It doesn't have to be in a, a really sharp point, but at least a, a point enough so that you can grab the backing without grabbing the detail as well. And I'll explain that further in the techniques. Another thing I use in order to get the decals off the backing onto the piece is I have found that these good old bamboo cuticle sticks cuticle pushers sometimes they're called are the best thing to use you can get these like a pack of 12 for like a dollar at any pharmacy or a walmart um and they work great now i have been using this one for quite some time now as the bamboo gets wet it can become more difficult to work with so that's why i've trimmed it down and during in the techniques i'll explain how i trim this down to keep it nice and you know, sh not sharp edge, but precise edges and stuff like that. But these are these are very good to use. Um, another thing I forgot to take one out is my good old precision cotton swabs, and this I use essentially to just dab up the extra fluid that's around. Now, especially when working with small uh, decals. 
the less fluid you can have around it, the better. Otherwise, that little tiny decal with that little drop of fluid will not set properly because of just how fluid works. And it'll kind of float to the top of that little tiny bubble. So sometimes you just got to dab things around and get rid of that excess stuff. Another thing I use is I have these toothless alligator clips. And what I use these for is to basically as levers in order to keep a piece oriented the way that I need it to be easier to apply the water slide decal. And when I go through the techniques, I'll explain that a little bit more. Another thing I use, especially with pieces that are, once again, I can't orient properly on the work surface, is I use a painting stand in conjunction with the alligator clips. So I'll say I, I need to get to the top of a piece and, but I can't really hold it the way, like maybe it's on the side. So I'll use the alligator clip to hold the piece. I'll put it in here. And then another thing I use is I use tack putty. This is just your plain old, what you, what you, whoop, there we go. What you, um, put posters on a wall with. And then I'll just, put this around it and push it down a little bit so that this doesn't spin on me as I'm trying to apply the water slide decal. And that's also something I'll explain a little bit later when I'm going through the techniques. Now, sometimes just to hold piece, you know, just, you know, sometimes I, I need to use the actual um, stickers because sometimes if I'm using a third party water slide, uh, water decal provider, they might not have all the ones that the model expected. So in order to apply the stickers that come with the kit, I'll use these more pointy um, tweezers here for those types of things. Um, because the, the very, very uh, thin edge there is able to just kind of hold on to the sticker enough until I can get it on the model and it'll pull away easier. Another thing I use is a small bowl here. This is essentially like uh, what you would use for like, you know, um, preparing for cooking and you put your ingredients in so you can just, you know, do the prep work ahead of time. And as you can see, what I do is I use this to hold the decals that I've had to remove from the main sheet, but haven't either haven't gotten to that number yet, or there's multiple places where that decal needs to be used. So I put them in here so I don't lose them. And another thing is paper towels. So I use paper towels for, just have some on the side here because I'm working with water. So in case I need anything spills or something, I use some paper towels to set up a little workspace for myself because then I can dab the decal and get the excess fluid off. And then I have another one to collect all the wet backings and stuff like that here, um, just so that they're in one place and not everything gets all wet. And the next, the other thing is scissors. And these are actually decal scissors. And when I first heard of decal scissors, my first reaction was, wow, that seems to be very specific and probably unnecessary. And boy, was I wrong because not only are these blades incredibly thin, which you need when, especially when working with very small decals or tightly printed uh, decal sheets. But I don't know if you can see this or not. Let me see. But there, the edge the tip is slightly curved in on both blades. And what that does is it allows you to do an incredibly precise cut, which of course what you need when working with small ones and making sure that you're not cutting into a water decal that you'll need later when trying to remove another one. So it, it may seem a bit too specific and a bit much, but I, I would definitely recommend getting these I would say probably the two most important tools to use other than the water is if you're only going to get a couple, I would say the decal scissors and the reverse tweezers are probably the 
most helpful throughout the entire process. Okay, before going into the actual techniques on applying the water slides, I wanted to talk a little bit about what options you have out there for water slide decals. Now, if you've got a kit from Bandai and it comes with water slide decals, those are perfect. Bandai is still pretty much the best water slide decal for a Gunpla kit. So if your kit comes with water slide decals, use those. There's no need to go look for any other ones. However, especially when you're working with HG kits, uh, your high grade, uh, even with premium Bandai ones, the water slide decals can be very um, limited. And so many times you might need to go to a third party to find the water slide decals. In fact, you know, Bandai doesn't even really do a, any kind of stickers for those except for the color correcting ones. So there's not even mapping guides or anything like that. So what you can do is sometimes Bandai will release um, water slide decals for your HG kits. Unfortunately, which I don't really like so much, is normally when Bandai releases for HG kits, it's in a multiple mobile suit uh, sheet, which is basically broken down by either series or, or, um, line of kits. Like, you know, this one right here is Char's Counterattack. And there is multiple mobile suits on this from that lot, from that anime. Or, like what they did for The Witch from Mercury, they released multiple sheets, which did multiple of the mobile suits from Witch from Mercury all in, in one bit, normally four or five, depending. Now, they are fine, but the thing is, is that they are very limited in the amount of water slides and the details that you get for them. So I normally don't get the HG uh, water slide decals. I have these because I didn't realize there were other options, and sometimes there just aren't third-party options for certain ones, like Char's Counterattack. The, all these mobile suits don't have third-party, or I haven't been able to find third-party equivalents, so the only ones available were the Bandai. And these are high quality, just as high quality as the ones you get in the kits. It's just I don't like the limited number, because there are companies like, which I consider the two second tier or top tier third party ones is, and if you watch my uh, videos, you will notice that I use a lot of G Rework and Delpy. I use these whenever I can. And these are incredibly detailed. Now, they don't just do HG kits. They also do real grade and master grade and full mechanics and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of times what will happen is G Rework and Delpy will have the water slide decals available before Bandai does, because in most kits, Bandai doesn't provide water slide. They just do the stickers. So I'll tend to get the G Rework or the Delpy before Bandai even provides their version of the water slide decals. And these are high quality. Um, lots and lots of detail. Now, this is an HG kit. This is for, um, the Origin series. This is Char's Zaku. And with this, Bandai, I don't believe, provided water slide decals, or if they did, they were, like I had said before, multiple suit. And the, the instructions don't have a decal mapping for where things go. So the numbering system here was made up by uh, G Rework and they will then provide, they don't, G Rework doesn't always provide an actual mapping showing what numbers go where, but what they will do is on their website, they will have images of basically every angle you can want for where the decals were applied. So you just have to go through the images of the model with the decals on them, similar to this. 
but it would be, you know, the front, back, sides, weapons, stuff like that. And then you can easily figure out which ones go where. Every once in a while, uh, you can find a G rework where, at least for the front and the back, they'll provide the numbers where things go. Now, Delpi is much better at providing, um, for, especially for the HG kits or ones that Bandai doesn't have in mapping for the markings. They're very good at providing. It's, it's still just a model with the decals on it, but they'll actually show what numbers go where from their water slide, uh, from their sheet. Now, in this case, here we have an RG. This is their version of the um, Sword Impulse Gundam. And because this is an RG, Bandai provided stickers, and they have a mapping document in there, um, in the instructions that the mapping, and so the numbers that Delpi and also G Rework would use in those cases where Bandai provided the mapping, those numbers are the same as what's in the manual. So you can just translate these directly onto the model where Bandai says they should go. And that happens with pretty much any um, third-party company out there, where if, if it's a if it's a kit where there is a markings diagram in the manual. If a third party provider provides the decals and they have them numbered, they're going to match what's in the manual. So, but like I said, these two, G Rework and Delpy are the preferred. Slightly, uh, slightly less, not really that much less, but I would consider them third tier decals or second tier third party. You have your DL model. In fact, the model that I'm doing this tutorial on is my Master Grade Barbatos, and I am using the DL model water slide decals for that, and that's what I'll be showing being put on. So these are definitely quality. They're just not as high quality. Sometimes with the smaller bits, you can't see all the wording, whereas with your G Rework or Delpi, you normally can see the wording or at least the larger words. Um, so this is, um, this is DL model. And then there's another company called SIMP, S-I-M-P. And I believe at one point in time, SIMP wound up buying DL model because I have some DL model ones that have the SIMP emblem up here instead of this. So I think they merged at one time. So, but both of those are high quality. I've worked with both of them. Um, another one, which I would definitely say is probably the, the lower of the third party ones, but they are still good to work with. If you can't find them in any of the other ones, then you can go with Snowfire. Snowfire has this symbol right here. They're quality done. Normally what these will be is Snowfire tends to deal with ones that are older kits where the other companies or Bandai aren't producing the water slide decals any longer. So what they've done is they've, um, you know, and normally it's going to be a kit that Bandai provided stickers for. And so the mapping document is going to be in the manual and the numbers on here will correspond with that mapping document. Like this one here is a real grade. And so, you know, they're going to be printing the water slide decals based on the stickers in the model kit for ones that other people aren't providing any longer. So these are a good alternative if you cannot find them anywhere else. Now, there are a few that you probably want to avoid for various reasons. Now, one of them is this, and there are, I've, I didn't realize that this, this at the beginning, but this company's trying real hard to make it look like they're Bandai because this part of the packaging looks a lot like the Bandai packaging, except it has a different symbol. Obviously, it doesn't say Bandai on it because that would be <laughs> wrong. Um, sometimes you see them uh, 
listed as detail up water slide decals or something else like detail or something like that. But what these are, these are knockoffs. And the reason why I know that these are knockoffs, and unfortunately I have gotten a couple. I mean, they are still quality. You know, they're a little bit tougher to work with, especially with the, when you're, when you're dealing with a, with a long sticker, they don't tend to hold up much as well. But these are knockoffs, and you can tell because right here, even though it has this symbol on it, that right there says Ghost Custom Detail. I'm sorry, Ghost Custom Decal. Ghost is the G in G Rework. So these, they basically took the G Rework, copied them, and have started printing their own. And they aren't all from G Rework. There are some from other ones as well. But there, that, that's how I know that these are absolutely knockoffs. And I didn't realize that when I first bought them. These were some of the earlier ones that I bought. So I wanted to hold on to them so I can, when I eventually did this video, I would be able to show, hey, you know, watch out for these. Oops. Yeah, I'll put that in later. And then we have these ones. Now, I don't think these are technically knockoffs necessarily. They're just not quality. And th there's a whole lot of different ones with these. Um, various names. I can't even remember what some of them Some of them don't even have names. And what happens is they basically just get delivered. Because I had bought a couple of these because I was like, wow, or a few of them. Because I found a supplier on eBay. And I'm like, wow, these are ones I haven't been able to find the models for. And they basically just show the sheet. And I think I bought like six or seven at a really good price. And they were shipped internationally. And they just basically came in one bag. <laughs> All just stacked together. So I had to get separate bags to hold them in. And it did, I didn't notice this right away. But... Let me take this here. If I move this around, you can see as the light reflects off of it where the edges of the water slide decals are, which is good because that tells you where you need to cut around. Also, it allows you to grasp the backing without grasping the decal as well, so you can get it off the backing onto the model piece. I'm just going to move those a couple more times just to make sure it shows. So, and, and that, that's what you expect from a water slide decal. You, you, you can see the edges, the edging essentially, even though it's not that, that, you know, wide away from the actual printed part, but you can see it. This, no matter how much, you can see it's just one big shiny sheet. These did not separate the individual decals. These will be a nightmare to apply because you have nothing to grasp without affecting the decal that you're trying to slide onto the piece. I don't know what I'm going to do with these. Like I said, these happen to be ones that I couldn't find anywhere else. I don't know if I eventually, when I build these, I'm going to just deal with it. I mean, they look good. They don't look bad. It's just that these are going to be a real pain to work with. And essentially what it is, is they don't really have a brand name on them. They basically will just have some numbers and some, what I'm assuming are Chinese characters here. Because, you know, these did come from a supplier in China. But like I said, I do not think these are knockoffs. I think these are just ones that are being printed similar to Snowfire, where they're not available anymore anywhere else. And But they just didn't cut them out from the sheet so that you can use them as individual decals easily. So I just wanted to show that as well, just to give a warning on that. Now, the other types of water slide decals, and these will come from Bandai, 
G Rework does some, Bell Pie does some, and there's some other like uh Mech Decal, I think, is another one. I haven't worked with any of those, but they're another one. And what these are is these are just generic sheets that are normally separated by either faction. So like these are Earth Federation, um more Earth Federation stuff. They'll they'll have, you know, uh Xeon, stuff like that. They might even do it by series. Or, mo you know, or, you know, um, either model series or anime series. And it just gives you some generic things that if you wanted to apply more decals to your, uh, your model kit, it gives you some additional options. Like in this one, these are just all the EFF emblems in different width shapes and forms and colors and stuff like that and lengths and scales and all that kind of stuff. I, I'd like to use these just because I want the numbers more than anything else and if you know get getting I, i've looked at the sheets there are sheets that just have numbers but i really don't like the font that they use on those they're not as compliant as what you get with you know the kits but these are good if you just want some generic ones to use on multiple things okay as i mentioned during the tools the most important thing you can have is warm water if your water gets cold or even not as warm as it needs to be, then the decal will take longer to be able to be released from the backing. It won't really apply very well because the glue won't activate like it should. And it's just going to be a mess to work with. It, it, it really is. So the warm water is the most important thing. And how I prepare my water is normally what I'll do is I will heat up 12 ounces or 360 milliliters of water in the microwave for about a minute. While that's heating, I'll put some hot tap water into my ceramic cup here so that it warms up the ceramic and then just dump it out once the water's done in the microwave, put the water in here, and then I put it on my cup warmer, which I keep at 130 degrees because you, you want a, a 130 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about, I think, like 50, 52 degrees Celsius. And that seems to work perfect. It keeps it nice and warm. It's not too hot. And it works great. So that that is the most important thing to, to, do, to take care of. Another thing that I do I, as far as prep before doing the water slide decal is that after I do the build, I then disassemble as many of the pieces as I can into separate pieces so that I can work with as many surfaces at once or in each round of, of applying water slide decals because what will happen is that you don't want to turn over or work on a side or put down the side that has the water slide decal on it until it's fully dried. It's normally going to take about an hour or two. So you're going to have periods of put as many water slide decals as I can on surfaces, wait a couple hours, and then do other, the other surfaces that you need to do. So you might have like three, two, three, maybe sometimes four, depending upon how complex the kit is. Um, rounds of applying water slide decals. So the more that you can work with at once, the better. So here I've got my barber toes separated in, in, you know, I've even separated the arms into shoulder pieces and the arms. The only, I looked at the instructions and, you know, you definitely look at the instructions for the markings, uh, map to see where the decals go. And, you can tell, like, here in the waist, the only place where decals went were the skirts. So I took the skirts off so I can work with those individually. You know, backpack, legs, I even took off. There's these little side armor pieces and one in the back, and I took those off so I can work with those individually as well. So depending on the model you're working with, um, you'll be able to see how you should take things apart and stuff like that. And sometimes I might have to, you know, take things off because it's going to be easier to work with. Like, you know, if I have to put a decal on this right here, I can't just stand this up <laughs> because it won't balance. So I might pop this off and then use my um, painting and uh, alligator clips to, uh, to work with that type of thing. 
Um, and I probably will have to because there is some things I need to do on that. So, um, so that, that, there's that. And of course, you know, I've got the weapons back here as well. So the weapons are normally pretty easy to work with. They're just, they're easier to work with normally than the other pieces here. Okay. So for this tutorial, what I'm going to be doing is I've, I've built my master grade uh, Barbato, so I'm going to be using this to demonstrate how to put on the water slides. I'm not going to do all of them. I'm just going to take select ones and demonstrate how you need to, or the best way to put things on. So I can just show examples. These are uh, third party ones. These are the DL model water slides, and these are really nice to work with. Uh, and normally what I'll do is I have my computer over here with the keyboard. And I'll just set this over here so I can constantly be glancing at the mapping. You know, and this is a case where I have a model um, that has the mapping location because there's stickers that are provided by, for the master grade Barbatos. Um, if I don't have that, then I'll have the images from either G Rework or um, Delpi over on the side here so I can look and constantly see where the decals go either by looking at the image to see where they are or with Delpi using the numbers for their mapping, uh, showing the mapping on the, on the model itself with the decals applied. So I always have this work area here. One, I try to keep it so that it's centered underneath my camera so that I know exactly where I need to apply things so that people can see what I'm doing. Um, also after soaking the water decal, I want to tap it on the here so that I can get as much water off the backing before I put the decal on the model pieces itself because especially when working with small decals, if you have a lot of water on the backing and on the decal itself before you take it off, the water tension at the edge of the back of the backing will be enough to prevent you from being able to slide it off. I tell you the truth. It's it it is it is that um picky. <laughs> I've had I fought with it a number of times and then realized, oh I can just dab it. Now, since you're working with so such a small amount of water, normally by the time you're ready to dab another one, the area that you dabbed on will be dry already. So it's not like this is going to become a soaking mass of paper towel or anything like that. It's just something that I can just dab on and it's fine. And then also what I want to do is I want to keep the um, inside of the tweezers as dry as possible. So I'll, you'll see me do this from time to time, just grab the corner with this. And that's because I'm just trying to dry off the inside because I don't want too much water going on the backing. Um, before I soak it. I, I think that's just the leftover from when I was using normal tweezers because if I had water on my tweezers when I grabbed it, it made the backing super slippery and it was tough to hold on to. <laughs> I think with these, it's not as bad because they grip really well, but it's just a habit I got into, so I've kept it up. So, so what I'll do, what I do is I look at the map, at the mapping document and I decide what I want to do. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, um, I'm going to do these front flaps. And what you want to do when you, when you want to apply water slide decals is you want the surface you're going to apply the decal on as flat as you can possibly get it. So in this case, that's why I took these off instead of keeping them on the, on the waist so that I can have them flat on the surface, and then I can put them, because there's one that goes in the corners here, and then there's one that goes on the bottom part here. So looking at the mapping document right here, what I need for this one is I need 21 and 20, and 30, 21, 22, and 34. Because sometimes what'll happen is, depend, you know, for mirror image on each side, there'll be two different decals, normally one uh, space ahead, you know, away from each other. And then in the case of a long piece, 
it will probably be both sides will use the same decal. So you just want to take a look there. And then there's other things as well, like sometimes like this right here, that's telling you, you know, that, that's telling you what goes on the shoulder. And then it's saying, okay, for the, for the other side of the shoulder, here's the piece, here's the decal to use. And it lets you know that it's on, you know, both shoulders or something like that, or if it's on the leg, both legs, stuff like that. So, so what I'll do is I'll identify the decals that I need. And in this case, two of them happen to be right here on the edge, which is quite convenient. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes you got to go cutting in, hence the bowl. So I need 21 and 22. So I'm just carefully cutting these out. And I'll just cut down the middle here. And in order so that I can have some space, since I've got a whole bunch of space here to hold on to with the tweezers. I cut closer to the other set of decals so that I can have additional space on the side. You'll, you'll figure out what works best for you, what's easier for you to hold on, how to hold the tweezers and how to apply them, whether it's, you know, I'm right-handed, my left hand's pretty useless. So my left hand essentially just holds <laughs> the tweezers and I use my tools with my right hand to um, apply everything to the piece. And then I need 34, which is right down here. So Cut right across here so I can get a whole bunch of them out at once. Okay, those are extra. So these are the ones that I'm trying to get right here. These are 34. So I'm just going to cut these out, add them there. Most important thing is to preserve the numbers. Because many of them look very similar, except for maybe there's a space somewhere or other little detail that, you know, that's the reason why there's two different numbers. Like with this one, this is 34, but 33 has little spaces between the thick part and the thin part of those lines. So, now what I normally try to do is I normally try to work from top to bottom because I'm, I'm right-handed and it's going to be easier for me to do it that way. Or at least it's half, I mean, I guess not so much because I'm right-handed, but that's just what I like doing. And... <clears throat> I need a 22 and a 23. So I'm going to cut off at the bottom so I can preserve the number for later. And I just need one of each. Okay, now it's important to take a look at regardless of how they're oriented on the sheet itself, it's important to take a look at how the sticker is oriented on the piece, on the diagram itself. So as you can see, what it is, is the there's a straight line right there. Oh, there we go. Let's see, yeah. The straight line is at the top, and the circle, that end of it, is at the corner of the piece. So it's right here. It fits right into that corner there. And the same thing happens, but the opposite side with the other one. So it's important to look at the... Sometimes what will happen is, 
similar to this where they show you options, sometimes what will happen is they'll, they'll show the decal in detail on how it's supposed to be oriented on, on the side as opposed to having to look on the image here. Now, sometimes they'll put the decal on the side next to the number, but it's not oriented the same way. So you, you do need to double check to make sure that what they're showing here next to the number is how it's been placed on the model itself. I don't know why they do that, but it's I've had a couple kits do that to me. So, so what I'll do is... Yeah, I'll do this one first. So I'm going to just grasp it with the tweezers. In this case, since it's going to be here, actually, no. This way I can slide it up that way. So I'm grasping on the corner there. Before I start soaking it, I'm just going to put a little dot of uh, setter here where the decal is supposed to go. You want to try to get it as small as possible. It's not always super easy to do. So then I'm going to soak it. I find anywhere between, depending upon the manufacturer, anywhere between 7 to 10 seconds. Sometimes 10 seconds is really as you're saying, after you say 9, you pull it out. But depending upon the manufacturer, but normally it's like seven to, to nine or so seconds. So I'm going to push it off. Hey, what? Let me. There we go. Much better. So just going to push this off right there. Get it as close as you can. Now, one beautiful thing about the water slide decals is that you have time to move it into place. Now, I'm just soaking away some of the excess. And then I'm just going to use my little tool here to push it into place. Now, what I do is I will just... By looking at where it is on the in the image on the on the mapping, I'll determine how I should best align this. So whether it's going to be the edge of the piece, maybe you want to align it with some panel lining or something like that. So I will do that, and that looks good because it's supposed to be right there in the corner, and the circular part goes out at a slight angle to match the angle of the piece. So that's good. So I'll leave that right there. And then, as long as I do the same thing to this other piece, they're going to be aligned similarly. And here we go. I'm just going to count that right there. Put a little bit of setter. And soak it. Count it to nine because with this type, nine seems to be about the right amount, especially for these fairly simple ones, for short ones, compact ones. Now you might need a little bit more if it's like a long pinstripe piece or something like that. You might need to soak it for a little bit longer just so that it gets all the the glue out or all the glue along the piece activated because they're they're a little bit more difficult to move into position when they're when they're long and thin. It's gotta be slower, so the more you can activate the glue the better. Because at first, the glue provides a bit of a slippery medium to move things around on. Okay. 
There we go. And then we can go ahead and do these. Now, one thing to say is that everything you see printed on this sheet is a water slide decal, including the numbers. So if you watch me do my water slide decals in other builds, you'll see that I am constantly cutting off the number and putting it to the side because I've had many instances where before I did that, where the number would come off in the water because it's a water slide decal so it, it separates it floats at the top of my water and then as i'm soaking another one the number attaches itself and then gets on my tool and suddenly i have this little invisible extra little millimeter um extending from my tools that then pushes the piece before i expect it to and it was frustrating. I couldn't figure out what was going on. And then I realized, oh, those numbers are coming off the backing. <laughs> so I make sure that I trim everything that's not absolutely needed off before I soak it. So now since this is a little bit of a slanted piece right here, I'm still going to be able to get the water slide on there, but I'm not going to apply the setter until I soak it. Because then I can just dab it on there and put the water slide decal on right after, and I don't have to worry about the, the water, I mean, the uh, setter slide, you know, dripping off, essentially. Now, if it's a super extreme slant, what you can do is you can put the decal on first and then add the setter to it and wait a little bit so that it works its way in so you can slide it around better. Now, another thing it, that I've found is that if you notice that there is a there's a panel line right there or a little bit of an indentation there if you get the water right on that panel line or indentation since we're dealing with rather small amounts of fluid it's going to be enough to keep that piece of what that drop that little tiny drop little water in place now, because I'm dealing with a longer one, I'm going to put a couple dots there just so that I get the setter on the entire. Sometimes, you know, if, if it's like a really long pinstripe, you're going to want to put dots along the... You don't have to be continuous. In fact, I find that the, the setter, if you try to put like a big line of fluid setter down, it's going to beat up in certain areas anyway. So it, it doesn't really like to be a big line of, of fluid. It prefers to be little droplets of fluid. So that's why I just do little droplets to begin with. And there we go. I'm trying to... And just to, sh and then I'm going to use this. And what I'm doing is I'm just barely trying to touch the fluid without touching the decal itself. So I might even go just slightly up to absorb the fluid without moving the decal. Now, just to show, this is a cuticle pusher. And of course, I've used it multiple times. And what I find is that working with the fluid um it the the bamboo gets wet so eventually i just need to shave it down to get back down to the dry wood or in in after i do a complete model i'll sh reshape things and what i like to have is i like to have a crisp edge that's flat so i can move the pe the 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 decal off the backing especially the larger ones and then what I do is I do one at an angle so that I can have the precision point here to move things around. Probably be, probably be good to replace this soon, but it's still working for me. And then we'll go ahead and put this. This is a nice thing. This is a nice one because it doesn't matter how it's oriented. It's the, it's the same no matter what 
how you put it. Let's go ahead and soak this first. Grab off the excess. Two drops work perfectly. Okay. Sometimes it'll wrap around, but you just kind of just gently push it up. There we go, until it's in place. And just take your time, be patient. The, lot, the more times you do it, the more you'll learn how these things move. And how to get them into place the way you want them and stuff like that. So, just like with any skill, you'll learn it as you go along. Okay, so then, especially when working with smaller ones, sometimes I just wait a little bit to let them dry or I'll just blow on them to help dry them because now I want to put the softener on. And once again, you, you kind of want to use as little as you can get away with. So I'll just try to dab. And I'll tend to go in the order in which I've, you know, I'll get, leave the last one that I applied to last to give it time to set. Now with these longer ones or the slightly bigger ones, you probably don't have to worry as much. But if you're working with an HG kit and you've got this really tiny decal, you could actually just pick up the decal with the with the uh, brush on the on the cap there, and then it's a pain in the butt. Now once you have put the softener on. You do not want to touch the decals because they will come off in your fingers. So I'm just going to put these to the side so that they can dry. And those are the only decals I need to put on those so I can put them off way to the side because I never need to touch them again. So that's the basics of putting them on. Of putting decals on. Now... As you can see, the various decals are easy to see pretty well where you need to. Some of the white ones are harder to see. So like say with these right here, the 24, they might be more difficult to see the orientation. Now when you look at the actual, like look at, if you look at 30 here, the little line that goes up is pointing up. So that's what you would use to determine what the what the orientation is. Some of these other ones uh, some of these other ones I find that uh, like say this one right here This looks like this might have some writing on it, but it's hard to see right now. When you get it wet, it's going to be more visible against the backing. And normally what will happen is that certain lines will be shorter than others. So that's how you can orient it. Look to see where the shortest line is or the, 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 the shortest part is to see how it's supposed to orient. Is the short line supposed to be on top or the bottom? Can, on in comparison to the piece that you're working with. So that, that's, you know, you just got to look at things that way um, sometimes. 
because especially with the smaller ones, you may not be able to read all the wording. Sometimes, like, you know, with these, what is that 50 right there? You can actually see right there where my finger is. That's the, that's the name of the mobile suit. You know, it's the, the model number and the name Barbatos. So you can see them pretty easily. And there are times when you get to choose like what main emblems you want. Like in this case, do you want the, you know, the, the solid one, the clear or the white or black etched ones? And you just want to be consistent with whatever ones you choose at the beginning to just so that it looks better overall. Okay, now, and, and that's essentially, you know, you, sometimes you might, especially when you're working with your arms and legs, you might need to bend things a certain way. Um, sometimes, like here, I've got a piece here and I might need to put them on, so I want this to be as flat as possible. So on the bottom here, it's got, you know, this is where it clips into the, the mobile suit, so I'll use this clip to just kind of hold it in place. Now, that may still be a bit wobbly. So if it's still a bit wobbly, I will take another one. And I will use this as a lever. You know, I'll put it on the round part here so it can, it can move around if I need to slot, you know, spin it or anything like that. But that's going to give it, that's going to keep it in place because this is the lever here. And that's going to keep it a flat surface for me to work with. And that's what I, that's how I normally use these. Or in the case where, let's see here, let me just, let's see here, never too far away from my, uh, my piece separator here. So I'll just take. So say I need to apply. Now that this has some stuff on the bottom, so it's not really gonna. Well, I guess it sits okay, but say it doesn't. Say you're trying to get to the side of something or something like that. What I'll do is, you know, say I had to put something on this surface right here, this edge right here. So what I would do is I would see if I actually have to do that. As a matter of fact, I do. So I've got to put a, I've got to put a decal. Let's see here right here. Decal has to go on right there. Now, in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my paint stand here, and I'm going to use this, you know, so I've got my alligator clip holding on to this so that this is as flat as I can get it. And I'll use my tack to keep it in place so it doesn't spin. And then I've got a whole big, you know, I just, I have a lot of tack. <laughs> it's hard to find any that isn't a huge amount, but I, you know, I'll just reuse the pieces over and over until it doesn't stick anymore. And then that is, that is 24, which is very similar to ones that we just did, except they're white instead of black. So, 24. I 
I've got that cut out there. And... Oh, okay. So this here is the bottom of the piece. And according to here, it's fit in the bottom right here. And the line is at the bottom edge of that piece and the, the circle goes up. It looks strange because this is, I've had to flatten it. So that's going to go on just like that. So once again, because it's a bit of an extreme angle, I'm going to wait to apply the setter. In fact, I'm going to wait to apply it until after I get the decal on. And just pulling around the edge there. There you go. Alrighty. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some setter to this. And try to absorb some of the excess there. And then move this in place here. Okay. Now, another thing to keep in mind that say if you're, you're, you're moving the decal around and it suddenly won't move anymore, what you can do is you can just apply some water or better yet the setter and just wait a little bit and then you should be able to move it around again once you moisten it some more. Don't, don't try to force it or you're going to wind up ripping it and making it look real bad on the piece. So, and then I would do the same thing with this other one. I would take that off and do the exact same thing. But I just wanted to demonstrate how I use the, the stand to, uh, to help apply in cases. There's some fluid that dripped down here. So I just want to absorb all that so that any fluid you leave on there has the possibility of leaving a cloudy residue. So I didn't want to risk that. So now I'll just go ahead and put the softener on. And 
and then I'll put this aside to dry. So that pretty much takes care of the, of the techniques that I use. Here are some tips and tricks that I've learned. Now a lot of these I've probably covered during the other parts of the videos, but I just wanted to put them in a distinct area all together. So I can't emphasize this enough. Keep your water warm. You have to mention, you have to do it. <laughs> However you can do it. Um, make sure that when you're working with a piece that it's as flat as you can get it. If you need to use anchors and other things to keep them flat or to orient it in such a way that you can work with it better, then do that. Um, you know, even if it's as, as, as little as just, you know, making sure that it balances properly. You know, if it's solid and balances, then that's fine. You know, when putting it on this leg, I can put my decals wherever I need to on this leg and it'll be fine. Separate before doing the water decals. Take a look at the model, uh, the mappings uh, diagram, and determine where the decals are going to be applied. And then separate your model into as into enough pieces so you can work with a lot of surfaces at once between each apply and drying uh, cycle. Use the, um, you know, use the painting stand and the alligator clips as you need to. If your tool gets wet, and you'll know that because suddenly you'll be pushing a piece and it'll come right back because there'll be just little tiny fibers that hold on to that, um, that decal as you're pushing it around so it moves back into place. I'll just use an X-Acto knife. And I'll just shave off some to get back down to dry wood so that everything goes. And sometimes I might have to just cut off to make the edge. You know, the, the, the more per precise the edge is, the easier it's going to be to work with. Use as little fluid as you can get away with using, because especially when working with um, small decals, the more fluid you have, the harder it's going to be to position it or even to get it off the backing. That's why I dab the, after I soak, I dab the backing on the paper towels here so that I get as much water off as possible. Before working, when, when you have, more likely than not, you're going to have to put decals on multiple sides of your model. So, say you have to put them on this side and this side. Before, you need to, be, before working on the opposite side, you've applied decals, give plenty of time for the uh, decals on the one side you applied it to dry. I would say at least an hour, probably better to be an hour and a half or two hours. Then they'll be set enough where putting them on the paper towel won't uh, rub them off. If you're going to be applying a clear coat to your model, let your model dry overnight after applying the water slide so you make sure that everything is completely dry before you put the clear coat on because if you have moisture trapped underneath your clear coat it's most likely going to peel away eventually so and definitely you want to use um setters and softeners in in to put your decals on I'm going to put in the uh, description a link to a uh, video by someone else that has done a great job of comparing multiple water slide decal fluids. Some some of them do two fluids, some just have one fluid to use in both parts, but he does a great job. It's another Barbatos Rex 
uh, video where he compares a whole bunch of fluids for water slide decals, and it's amazing. I couldn't compete with his, so I'll just point you to his. For safeguard and hazards, there's only really a couple. One, once you put the softener on your decal, don't touch the decal because it will rub off. It's not going to be harmful to you. You know, wash your hands just like with anything when you're working with chemicals when you're done. It's just going to rub off or ruin the decal that you spent the time putting on. Once the softener is dried, you don't have to worry about that. Also, even though most uh, of your decal fluids, your setters and softeners, don't give off a, an odor, really, it's best to work in a well-ventilated room. Just keep in mind that, you know, just because you can't smell it doesn't mean there aren't fumes to um, in, in the area. So if you do start feeling headachy or, or anything that seems strange, just take a break. Um, some people are going to be more sensitive to the chemicals than others. You know, I, I've actually left these slightly unscrewed and they haven't evaporated away or anything like that, um, you know, for long periods of time. So they don't evaporate readily, but just in case, uh, just have a fan on that, an exhaust fan or something like that. Just be on the safe side. I hope this video has been helpful to anyone who has been wanting to add applying water slide decals to their model builds or discover a new technique that may make it easier for their current water slide application. Please feel free to share your successes and failures in the comments below. Also ask any questions that still need to be answered that weren't addressed in this video. I will answer any questions as soon as I am able. I have provided in the, a link below in the description to a helpful video by Barbatos Rex. He does excellent videos where he reviews and compares multiple products that perform the same functions, such as paints and tools. The link below is his video on decal setters and softeners. If you follow the link, please let him know Gunpla Shoshinsha sent you. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you for the next one. Thank you for watching this video right to the end. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. That does help out the channel. If you would like notifications as to when new videos are posted to this channel, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you do have time, please do enjoy one of the videos that are popping up around my head.